is is chilling. What more can I say? Top billing. What up, everybody? This your man, Bill Bellamy, and this is Top Billing, the number one podcast for the culture, the movement, and the discussion. I am really excited about my guest today. This man is the icon oh. when it comes to making fantastic films. He is a movement in the culture. He is a, a heartthrob to the ladies. He's cool <laughs> with the fellas. You've seen him in iconic films as Minister Society. Um, love Jones, the Frankie Lyman story. You see him every week on Power Book to Ghost. My good friend and Mr. Extraordinaire Lorenz Tate is in the building. Can we make some noise for Mr. Lorenz Tate? People? Hey. Wow. LT. On, I got I got the man for that. I gotta take I gotta take yeah, the You gotta get on. comfortable. Let me, let me get real get comfortable, comfortable me, man. Okay, before we even start, man, I wanna just say this to you. <laughs> Mr. Bill Bellamy. First of all, that was an extraordinary introduction, so thank you for that. Absolutely. We got a lot to talk about. <laughs> I know this is your show, but... But you're going to probably I'm take a, over. You're damn right I'm going to take over. <laughs> and I'm going to start by saying congratulations <laughs> on having an incredible show. Thank you, I've man. I've been watching you and what you're doing. Um, you're just, you know, always taking it to the next level, doing things for the culture and for the industry, yeah. um, for us. And I appreciate you. You know, you always motivate me. One of my biggest uh, <laughs> motivations is Billy. Listen, Bill Bellamy, <laughs> the hustler. Thank you. It man. is no game out here, man. Let me give you a little bit of, uh, you know, your your flowers, man. Okay. We want to talk about, you know, things that I've done. I want to take a moment and. Talk about the things that you've done. Let's take it back to one of your first movies. Thank um, you. What is it? Uh, 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 <laughs> Which one? The, um, with, uh, 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 Ed Lover. Uh, and, um, who's the man? Who's the man? First movie. One of your first films, man. Yes. You've been in movies uh, like uh, 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 Love Jones, mm -hmm. which is a, a, a special. Our, our movie. Our, you know our film. Saying? We're going to talk about iconic that. Iconic movie. Oh, man. Uh, projects that you have done. You you started out also with um, Deaf Comedy Jam. Yeah, you Def know what I mean? Jam, Real stuff. Obviously, you, your days in uh, MTV, but when you made that transition as an actor, man, to be able to do things like, I said, the film Love Jones and uh, TV shows like Fast Lane. Yeah. <laughs> Come I don't on. know how I did Co it, Come man. on, man. You, able, I, I no you know idea. what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to have to bring up co Cousin Skeeter. Oh, but Skeeter. That's it. <laughs> Lil Skeeter. Uh, what um, up, Bobby? Yeah, man. But th the fact that you've been able to do so much, both in making that transition in a real way mm -hmm. from a comic, comedy, to, you know, doing these movies, how to be a player. Mm -hmm. I mean, that really spoke to you. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I was you, living that yeah, life. Yeah, you was like living that, that life. You, know you was really saying? in the streets. I was in and the listen, streets at listen, that time. <laughs> listen, I was. When I'm, listen, you ain't gonna be you're dry snitching up in here, but I was there. You was I, with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know, yeah, I know about was, that. But we, we, was, we, when was, we was out there doing in those streets. We did, you know, it didn't we make were, it. We were young. Yeah, we, we were young. Do what we wanted. We, yeah, yeah. There was we, no Instagram. No, no it didn't no make it. It did TikTok. not. It did not make it to the movies. But I'm glad that you were able to do those kind of movies where you were a leading man and doing your thing, man. Continuously working in television, always grinding. Yo, just in general, I, I, and I don't want to spend too much time on you because we got to talk a little bit about yeah, what I've done. But I want to say this. No, no, no. I want to talk about, yo, you were one of the first brothers that had one of the craziest um, Hollywood deals. Remember yeah. you back in the days when you can get <laughs> I got the the, bag. The, these crazy <laughs> deals because what happens like wow. agents or I should say studio execs and network execs were always looking for, for the, comics, next, the next the funny ne guy, the next yeah. to build, you know, uh, a TV show around. And I remember Bill telling me, um, the kind of deals you were getting, yeah. just the whole, like the whole deal. It was a million deal. dollars. It was a Good million Lord. dollars. Good <laughs> Lord. I was like. It was a million dollars. It was a million dollar deal with NBC. I'll never forget that. And wow. I was like, I was like, yo, you, I was like, are those zeros right? Yo, you get, you've been getting the bag. Yo, <laughs> Billy Blast has been getting the bag <laughs> for decades. That was crazy. Understood. It blew my whole you mind. Know, you know, you know, you was the first person I called when I, when I seen that check. When I was you, like, I yo. Said, you, and you know what I was thinking? <laughs> Shit, I gotta be funny. I gotta start cracking some jokes out this motherfucker because it's a true story, bro. I what? couldn't believe I it. I was like, "How are they giving Yo, you?" Yo, you I thought it was fake money. It was real money. <laughs> you didn't. You whether you uh, shot a pilot or not, just to have uh, some yeah. take you off the of block. the market. Yeah, they held me for a million. 
yeah. for an M. Uh, M. Back then, you back pay then, or that, play. Pay or play. That means yeah. when you say pay or play, whether yeah. you do a project or not, the check clears. That is like ten million dollars today. Yeah. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, man. It, it was it was really um for those who are watching and listening. The reason why you know Lorenz and I can talk like this, we've been friends for over 25 years, and like we were coming up in a game together. You know, I'm coming up as this comedian guy. He's an actor already, and he's rocking out. Um, you know, and I'm like coming from the comedy angle, and we meet in the middle. That's the beauty of like uh two different types of ambition. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember seeing you on TV as a little kid. I didn't never think I would meet your little young ass. You know what I'm right. saying? And right. we met, for all the people um, that love the culture and iconic movies, we met on uh, Minister Society because you were... It was after... No, no, no actually, was, you know what it was? What was it? It was after Minister Society. It was actually Dead, Pre Dead Presidents. Was Dead Presidents before Love Jones? So, so, yes, it was okay, right there before... You it go. was the movie that I did before Love Jones. Okay. And so I came... Dead to, Presidents. Dead Presidents. I was out there doing the, you know, the press tour, the campaign. Came to MTV. And I came to MTV. I always uh, watch you uh, on your show, and it was like you, <laughs> you didn't get. What anywhere. year was this? Do you think? I want to say it was ninety five. Ninety five. Okay. Ninety four. 94, 94 going into the five. 95. Yeah, 94, Go. 95. We was babies back then. By Boo, the way, we was a little babies. We was young. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, I remember that was the place to go. If you did not go see Bill Bellamy. It, what you wasn't you can't get sell nothing you because sell we nothing. were the one stop shop like MTV was selling your movie we were selling your album everything. everything so everybody came through yeah. there and it was heavily on the music so when actors could get in there it was plus. it was a big big to do because it was a part of the culture you know how big the, the music culture is music yeah. fashion everything right so I was able to come through there and I remember the energy was great immediately mm. And we hit it off, right? And after we did our interview, it was just like... But this is the funny thing. I, I don't know if I ever told you this. So when I'm interviewing you for Dead Prisoners, I already seen Menace. Right, right, right. Right? right. So I'm thinking you old dog. Right. So that's so how you, I'm, you I'm did tell me you, this. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking you crazy than a motherfucker. I'm like, yo, man, real talk, we're going to need extra security because uh, this little old dog cat is about to come in here. But then when you came in, you was completely different. So that's when I was like, oh, he a real actor. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. he not really that guy. Yeah. That was a character. That happened quite a bit, man. I would go into <laughs> rooms, man, and people thought I was going to up pistol on. Them, you know what I'm saying? Draw down on them. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. no, man, it was uh, it was a great vibe. And from there, you know, we just stayed in contact. You know, me co coming out from the West Coast to the East Coast, Absolutely. hanging out, showing me around, like, yo, man, because we did the movie Dead Presidents in New York, right? So to come back and to uh, see the city in a different way, you know, we got a chance to party and, 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 and touch the land a little bit. And what people don't realize about the '90s at that time. The soundtrack of the movie was a character. It was a, it and y'all's soundtrack for Dead Presidents was crazy. It was crazy. It, I was mean, cr it literally was crazy. You could go right now, Google Dead Presidents soundtrack, listen to it. One it's, of the best soundtracks. It's phenomenal. Yeah, and it's it phenomenal. fit the movie, right? In, mm -hmm. in, in, in that time, in that era. Um, but no, from then, man, we just became really tight and... Uh, it was the the movie uh, Love Jones. Yeah, that, that was that was the one I had to get my weight up because I was like, uh, I'm I'm about to be in the movie with some real actors. <laughs> I mean, listen, I was like, yo, they can act like they. Yeah. I was the only comedian in the movie. Yeah, and shout out so to every scared. shout out to everybody from that film. Mm -hmm. You know, all the cast. Um, you know, Ted Witcher who wrote the movie, yeah. obviously Queen Neil Long. Long and. You know, Isaiah. just everybody who was a part of making uh, an iconic classic film and the culture and all the Love Jones uh, family, as we like to call it. Thank you all for supporting that movie. It's changed a lot of lives. You know how many times we, we talk about. You know how about many dairy races out here because of you? <laughs> Do you know how many dairy love races out in the love halls in the world because of you? Yo, man, it's so crazy to hear that because, you know, when we meet artists or we listen to a great song, right? Correct. And you, and you meet this artist and you're like, hey, man, that song changed my life. Uh, or it had an impact. Yeah. That's what we have been able to do with movies like Love Jones and what we do. So it means so much. Especially to the culture. Like, I, I'm i traveling and out on the road, and people tell me they've seen it ten times, eight times, seven times. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And here's the beauty of you being a talented actor. You are one of few people who have character roles that people remember forever. Like, this is the 30-year anniversary 
this year is coming up on the 30 year anniversary of Men's Society. Men's Society. And oh, dog. And we just had the 20 year anniversary of Love Jones. 26. 26. 26 years. 26 20, years of Love 26 Jones. 26 years of Love Jones. So that's a lot of babies. It's a lot of babies <laughs> going on. Um, 30 years, I can't even believe. Can you believe that, you've been around 30 years acting? I, I, I must have started. Looked, and you look 22. I started when I was six months. So I'm actually, <laughs> I'm 30 in a. And I'm 30 years old. No, 30 little something. Um, I want to shout out, you know, Tyron Turner from Minister Society. That's yeah, my, that's my that's day guy, one. That's man. my guy. That's my day one. Also, the Huge Brothers and everybody who was a part of that film as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just one of those things that continuously move from generation to generation. So shout out to all the Menace fan, old dog, always and forever. Yeah, people, you, people, you, people, you, people still call me old dog. I know, but here's the thing, Lorenz. It's it's and this is the reason I did the uh, the podcast was because I want to take people like you and take our fans on a journey on your journey on how you were able to do this that the other because a lot of times people don't really put your whole story together like they see snippets or sure. you know snapshots of your life right. you know what I'm saying you have played these like really dope characters that really stand out like how the hell you do that how do you go from you know old dog to darius love hall completely different dead prison completely different and then frankie lyman wow frankie lyman <laughs> frankie lyman is a whole nother game lane it's like a miles davis slash you know wow. like prince character because frankie lyman was was a young superstar. He was a young superstar. In the 50s? In the 1950s, 60s, yeah. who was uh, the inspiration to people like Michael Jackson Correct. and a lot of those young um, he was a artists. Child star, he was a yeah. child star, right? Yeah. And what he didn't realize is the business side of things. Like mm-hmm. most people who get into the entertainment, they don't understand there's a huge business side of things. But being a young uh, superstar coming out of uh, a community where they didn't have that happening. At I mean, he all. didn't he didn't know how to read a contract. They didn't he didn't understand those those terms. And he wrote these songs like "Why Do Fools Fall in Love" and um, uh, a, a bunch of others. But he did not you know get the credit for it or he didn't get the money for it. Um, and along his journey, you know, he decided that uh, you know. He loved women, right? And that he would marry them. I mean, them. they're really nice. <laughs> yeah, they're very nice. They're very nice. But the thing is, he decided <laughs> to marry them, and 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 it got to a place, and once he had passed away of, a, of a overdose years later, you know, there was a lot of money that had been accumulated. And, you know, the money needed to go to the rightful oh, heir. Yeah, yeah. Who, is, uh, who, who is? Who is the? Who is it? And the whole movie about... <laughs> You know who truly was the rightful heir to his estate or those those earnings because he didn't have any any children um, um, that I can recall at the moment. But um, yeah, so it was great, man, for me to be able to do you know movies like Menace and then do you know movies like Dead Presidents and and Love Jones and to do Why Do Fools Fall in Love. You ask how do how do I do it, man? Yeah, I that's just incredible never, though. I, I, I never wanted to stop. Right. I never wanted to be put in a box. I always wanted to challenge myself. And I felt like these characters and these opportunities were so different. Yeah. I didn't want to play a bunch of different old dogs. Or right, right. Like yeah, you I jump right out of that and go I to went, something the, else. The movie that I went to do right after Menace yes. was a movie called The Inkwell. <sighs> The Inkwell. Yeah, the Inkwell. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that, the Inkwell. That's the first movie I ever seen that made me want to go to the vineyard. Man, go because I had vineyard. never been. You know, I'm from Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. I ain't never been to no vineyard. Yeah, I'm upstate, like, where is that? That's where their people would go. Black folks would yeah. go. I didn't even and, know we went to the beach. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we ran. We ran our own thing. Yeah, so we made a right. movie about it, man, and a coming of age story. Mm. And for me to be able to say, okay, I'm gonna look and sound so different from old yeah. dog mm. that you know. At the time, I thought I was, yeah, people were going to catch on. They didn't catch on until later. They didn't, when I say catch on later, didn't see the the intention behind Mm -hmm. those decisions. Correct. Because I never wanted to stay, you know, in one lane. So later on, people began to say, oh, okay, menace, the inkwell, dead presidents, 
then Love Jones? Yeah, man. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, 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 you kill me because I, I always feel like the game or the industry does not give you your flowers the mm. way they should because it's not, it's not many of guys like you. Um, who are able to transform so seamlessly into another character. Mm. You know what I mean? You see a lot of white actors do it. You know, like uh, you go, let's just say uh, Gina, uh, Giovanni Ribisi. Mm -hmm. Like he's he's a stellar actor, Incredible but he can range. go, whoosh, like yeah. you go to another movie. Yeah. Like I feel like it's so hard for me to make those kind of transitions. I have to really do a lot of work because people know my personality. Sure. Do you know what I'm saying? No, no, We we here's the deal. I, I, I you, you point out uh, something I think is really important to to know in the industry that we have and this is not about pulling a race car the truth of the matter is for so long you know black folks we we don't govern over the industry in terms of decision making correct right and so we work you know twice as hard and sometimes get you know twice as less <laughs> right yeah, you don't get your <laughs> we don't get this we don't get our just due right but that doesn't define us and it doesn't stop us right right and so i really feel like you know, things are changing now because I feel like, you know, had there been studio executives or network execs at the time to see what I was doing, mm -hmm. things could have been a lot different. I mean, I'm not complaining. I feel like I've had an incredible uh, journey and the journey continues, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I certainly do know that my career uh, or something in terms of how... Uh, things have played out in my journey. Right. If it were perhaps someone from a different community, you might. Yeah. It, it'd be. It'd be. Now here's. I, a, I'll be. I would have been getting those million, million dollars, dollars. Yeah. Back, back in <laughs> back in those days. Right. 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 So that's why I was so blown away because right. I felt like I was doing the work, but a lot of times the money you was wasn't. You, the check wasn't there. It came later. Later. Yeah. It did. It come, for it did guys. Come, it for did guys later. and girls that are. Or actors or who are aspiring actors when you have a career like yours what was your motivation did you ever have points in your career where you felt like oh my god man like you know what's what's gonna be the thing for me to break out or I hope this movie like what what kept you encouraged and kept you persistent well, honestly I man I just kind of kept my head down mm -hmm. I just stayed true to the work and the art artistry You're right you know I didn't really want to get caught up into this is going to be the one, mm -hmm. the one to do what, to to make me a millionaire. Right. Um, I felt like that would come. Mm -hmm. uh, was this going to be the one that would change my entire life? Uh, I just didn't get caught up in that. My parents always taught my brothers, Leron and Lamar, and myself to, you know, run the marathon and not the sprint. Correct. And so, as opposed to focusing on the things that I felt like I should have been getting, I was good with what I was. I, and you I made the best of it. Yeah, I made the best of it. People don't know how many no's we get. Like, you know how many movies I went up for? And I'm like, damn. <laughs> right. God damn it. But that's part of the... That's yeah, the that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's like, like, I remember, one, I remember when I went up for... Uh, and I swear to God, I thought I killed that goddamn audition. And um, who got the movie? What's my man... <laughs> What movie was it? It was for uh, the girl, the girl who was the Clint Eastwood movie. What was the name of the movie with the boxer? Oh, you're talking about um, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, who knows? yeah, um, Million Dollar Baby. So okay, so I auditioned for Million Dollar with Baby with Hillary Swank. With Hillary Swank, right? right. And the brother who's it. Excellent actor who I love. No, 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 no shade on him, but he killed it too. It was Anthony Mackie. Yeah, Mackie. So Anthony Mackie, Mackie. and, and Mackie, sure. nice with him. Mackie, you know, woo! Yeah, Anthony, Anthony Mackie, Mackie nice. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was like, I right. gotta go up against Mackie, <laughs> woo! Because Mackie don't do nothing but dramas. Oh yeah. He, so I'm he, like, ah, oh, shit, I gotta go in my, I gotta go in my drama bag. Sure. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't good enough for that. No, one. no, no, no. <laughs> You know, it, it, it's, it's not about you. But you know enough. what I'm it, it, that, that, that wasn't, you know, that movie wasn't meant for you. You know what I mean? Exactly. There's yeah, so many and other I've things. learned that, like, you know, what's meant for me will come, you know. But when you first get in the game, you move out to Hollywood and, you know, you've been my friend forever. So, you know, like, we we, we push each other. Yo, we're going to get this. We're going to do sure. that. You know what I'm saying? We've always been like that, you know, tenacious at our dreams and stuff. Have to be. And sometimes you just don't get it. And I don't think people um see that part of acting. Like, you don't get, like, even 
and you know will smith didn't get every role he wanted he was certain things he even turned down he wished he could have gotten or eddie murphy i saw there was a, a thing an interview with him and he was like i turned down this animation film thinking nobody would like that and be, it was huge right. you know what i mean because yeah. you never know you, you it's never all know. about choices i mean here's the deal man you no one forced us or forced me to be in this industry so mm -hmm. All the things that uh, I'm able to uh, achieve and attain, I'm really grateful. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's not a force. But there is a competitive side to it. You yeah, have to we have gotta that. have that you, edge. You man. have to have the edge. You have to because there's so many people trying to do what you do. Yeah, We're all man. trying. People to are getting off the bus right now coming to Hollywood yeah, trying to saw, be. A, I just saw uh, thirty <laughs> of them uh, walk across this. And twenty eight uh, <laughs> of them going back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 29 of them. 29, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and, it's a tough game. And here's the deal. It has nothing, you know, to do other than that's part of the game, man. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you continue to, you know, chip at it long enough, you know, laws of it is, you'll, 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 something will happen. You yeah. know, it may not always be what you set out for it to be. I tell all people all the time, you come into the industry, you may want to become an actor or actress, but you might find yourself as an extraordinary writer or mm -hmm. director or producer or an executive uh, of, of, of a network or... Uh, a, a radio station. You Absolutely. just never, you really never know. know. And just that's what's that's what's so great about this. That's bro. what keeps the dream alive because bro. you know just about anything is possible. Well, right? If you can create it in your mind, I believe it's achievable. Achievable. And I use myself as an example. You know, I share a lot of you know my ideas with you, and I'm like, man, you know, I want to do this podcast thing. You know what I'm saying? I oh, want to yeah. do something where I could talk to you, talk to all our friends, cast that's making moves. And you was like, yo, B, that's your lane. You should do that. We've always been. We've like been that. talking about this one, whether <laughs> whether it was a late night show, whether it was, yeah. a, was a daytime talk show. Yes. The fact that we want to be able to have a place, a safe space where right. you and I can talk. Yes. Where people who have come up the ranks the way we have, or new people, need a place to come and talk and and share the stories and the journey, and maybe we can inspire some people, motivate people. Right. This is what we need. So we always share yeah. uh, these things and uh, what. Without it always sort of being inside, because when we do interviews and we talk, <laughs> it's like people are like, man, y'all talking in cold. Yeah, like they it's don't know. Like, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. so much. I mean, here's here's the thing that I admire about about you as an actor and as a friend. You've always been humble, man, and you've never ever changed. And you, but when you go to work, yes, you are full throttle. B, I can't talk to you right now. Hey, yo, B, I hit you back. I'm about yeah. to go knock this scene out. It's yeah. many times that I've I've called you and you were on the set. And one of my most memorable times calling you was when you flew to New York and you started on um on, on stars. Now this is this is what people don't realize is that your your character Councilman Tate started as a guest star. Correct. And I remembered that. Yeah. And you was like, Yo, B man, I'm going in. I'm gonna do this thing. You know, it's not it's not the big role yet, but it's a nice role, and I like it. I'm gonna see what happens. Sure. 19 years later. <laughs> <laughs> we still rocking. Yo, how Yo. did that happen for hey, you? Man, man, just the universe How did working. you go come as, as like, come on, ghosts, silently kind of chill yeah. and knock it out the park and here it come. Here come that, that guest star turning into a recurrent, turn into a, uh, a real uh, guy. Uh, yeah, man, it's it's amazing. I, um, what a journey. I got, I, it's, it's been a great journey. The whole entire power universe. Mm. Shout out to Courtney Kemp, who is, you know, the, the real the, mastermind she's, behind she's it. She's the beast behind, yes, it, behind uh, Courtney the scenes. Kemp. Kemp, uh, I, hey, Courtney. <laughs> yes, and my man, of course, my brother, Fifty Cent. Yes, you know uh, he is a power force all the way around. He's nonstop making things happen. Mark Canton, and I gotta say, Omari Hartwick. You know, Omari is a, a, a dear friend of of mine, as we all know, and. Uh, he had worked on a couple things that I was producing and, you know, we talked about finding ways to work together and we thought, Hey, why not? Let's rock on power. Let's talk to 50 about it. Talk to Courtney and just timing. I was doing other, other projects. Long story short, um, they got to a place where they found a role that would be great for me. Absolutely. And that was actually not councilman Tate. It was actually, um, uh, Terry silver, uh, the, lawyer who represented ghost while ghost was in prison and he started messing around with tasha okay. right um so that was the character that i was casted for but because there was scheduling conflicts i couldn't do it and um long story short i remember reaching out to courtney kemp saying hey listen 
this ain't got nothing to do with agents and managers. Right. This is a brother to a sister reaching out to you. You know what I'm saying? Black excellence. What do you want me to do? I'll come on to the show. Right. I'm happy to do an episode. You know, I'm in. Don't don't worry about my team. Don't worry. I, I'm telling you that I would come and rock out. And she says, we're actually, we're, we're looking to put together a, a character and we're looking for someone to play a young politician. Would that be something that you'd be interested? I was like, yeah, hell yeah, I'll be into it. And she was like, it's not one episode. It's going to be four episodes. I said, cool. I said, I'm going to be in New York working on something. And once I'm done, I, I'll, I'll roll out. And that's what happened. And <laughs> I'm happy. Look it happened. And she, and she said, I'm going to name the character Tate. I oh, said, hell yeah. Yeah, you got, you got to do that. Let's go. How, how hard can that be to play? It, 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 listen, it's, it was so <laughs> dope, right? And she, they allowed me, they gave me some ideas of what the parameters, what the character was going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, he's flashy. He's charismatic, charming. I was like, all right, cool. They was like, but he's kind of, he kind of slick. And I was like, yeah, I want to bring some of that to it, right? I just didn't know exactly what it was going to be. So I felt like when I walked into a room, it's like, what's up? What's going on, my brother? You right. know, how you doing, sister? Hey, there's the baby over to give a hug and a kiss, high five, everybody, everything's good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then you get to see really who he is behind closed doors. Yeah, he'll motherfucker though. He'll, yeah, oh yeah, Ooh. he'll he'll turn it, flip the switch on you. I in a did not know he was that dirty. Like I like the way you 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 had it. Well, the arc of the character because when I first I was right. like, oh yeah, that's dope. He's smooth. He coming up in the game, young Barack Obama. Then yeah. I say, oh, he's slick out oh, there yeah. in them streets. Well, the, the the show power is all <laughs> about duality, right? So yeah. what you see here may not be what's really behind closed doors. What you know, dealing with all the characters, they have this, you know sort of facade or what they present, mm -hmm. but what the reality is something else that applies to Rashad. Again, this person of the people, the person who's going to make a difference in your life and your community, but he's skimming money from, you know, the Queen's Child Project. <laughs> he got to, he got to live. The brother got ah, to eat. And you get these, these, uh, you get these pretty intense uh, love scenes. I don't understand. Yeah, listen, but, I didn't. Listen, bro. Listen, bro, you were you were more stressed than get on my nerves. You know what I'm saying? I probably had maybe one or two love scenes, maybe a couple kisses. Y'all get down with the get down. Is it in your contract? <laughs> they they put. <laughs> seems like it. God damn. I'm like. Yeah, it's crazy. Bro, so, you you what, what's up, man? I why didn't even why realize, I never get bros like this? Listen, this I didn't realize that when I was going to do the show that. The councilman, like the politician, what you know? You single, Anything right? Single, can but, but, right, but I didn't think that was gonna be. The, excuse me, I didn't think it was gonna be the case because you know the show was about other people. Yeah, and you mm. know they were like, it's all a matter of time. Okay, for councilman to have to peel off his shirt and Bro, drop you're knocking, trial you and, knocking and, things and, around <laughs> on the show. I'm like, yo, this is disrespectful. I'm so like, disrespectful. I got my kids watching. I'm like, Uncle, Uncle Tate, that's, <laughs> Uncle Renz ain't really doing that. That's yeah, yeah. acting. This is just acting. <laughs> Let everybody know it's just acting. It's just acting, right? <laughs> but but like I would I'm gonna segue into this because this is really hilarious, right? You, Moore Chestnut, and Shamar are three of my friends, Shamar Moore, by the way, who are heartthrob type dudes. Like, like hanging out with y'all is just pandemonium. Like, 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 <laughs> like when I'm by myself, I'm okay. When I'm with y'all, it is pandemonium. The monium. I mean, we go to the mall. We we walking around. We had a fundraiser. Lorenz. Oh my God, Lorenz. <laughs> and you are so good with it. How do you handle having this sort of amazing reception from your fans? Like, how do you handle I, that? Listen, I, I love the reception from the fans. Right. And it feels like we're already connected because they watch our films. They right. watch, you know, they kind of <laughs> grow with you. Um for me, I just want to stay grounded because mm. those are the people that's going to always be there. Correct. You know what I mean? The fans are, they're, 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 they're loyal. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm able to have that warm reception, it's, it's, it's important. Now, not every time that I can spend the kind of time that you like to do yeah, it but with you, your face. But they don't know you shy. Yeah, I'm a little shy. You kind of shy in real I'm, life. I'm, I'm a little, but I'm, I'm like, like, this is the funny shit that people don't know about <laughs> Lorenz Tate. We will be somewhere and he will get swamped and disappear. He, in the middle... <laughs> I'll be Yo. like, Rich, so we gonna go get some. No, no, Rich. here's the deal. Let, let, let's get it real. Well, Bill, what it, when, what, it comes, what it? when it comes to your fans, <laughs> hey, how y'all doing? When it comes to Bill's fans, which I love. Okay, go. Bill takes the time yeah. to really connect. I overtalk. I, you, you over, I'm sorry, I overtalk. You, you, you're a little overtalker. A little bit, a little bit. A little overtalker. <laughs> 
I like to take pictures. I like to hug. What's up, everybody? But you got a time limit. Your, your, your clock, your clock is like at about a minute thirty. Because I'm telling you, if it's four hundred signatures to sign, you're gonna do about twenty five, and all you're gonna see is a hat. You're gonna be gone. <laughs> Boom. You don't say that. Poop the hat. But Bill, on the other hand, oh my God, am I, oh, am I doing too much? Am I doing too much? Bill loves it. Bill loves. It. He wants to talk to everybody, and he wants to. Do, and he's so pressure on. He wants to. They want to do jokes. And they want to do this and that. And Bill, his voice. He's so boy. His voice carries. Oh my God. He's like a theater actor. <laughs> so he holds court. That's why what, you what's leave the, me. <laughs> And Yo, I'm like, and I, I, I got to be honest with y'all. This brother has left me <laughs> over 60 times. He's like, B, I'm not doing no more talking. You, Listen. B, B, do your, do your, do your seminar. I'm going to go eat. Because right. you, you're ready to eat and do what you got to do. Right. We got we got a time set. There's only so much time <laughs> in the know, day. I'm right? sorry, And man. it's great. So we do take the time for those who yes. support us. We love it. It's, yes, it's enjoyable. Absolutely. But sometimes, B, they don't even want to take that much time with you. It's me. You just it, love I'm it. I'm doing too much. Yeah. Okay, I'm You sorry. fanning out on the fans. I'm just saying. Man, I, I just know people don't realize, you know, when you they see you in as you know Councilman Tate and yeah, you no, and you macking love. them down, and then you know Love Jones, you just beating the brakes off of uh, Neil Long in the <laughs> stop, movie, stop. and then you in real life, you just want to go home. I just felt no, I'm 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 you a just, shot. I'm, like I'm a you sh actually and OCD. This is another thing people don't know. Oh, the man, man is the cleanest person <laughs> in the world. I mean, I, before COVID even. <laughs> Yo, I never see nobody wipe off a dashboard. Wipe off everything. Everything get wiped. Like he don't play. Man, what? Everything. Yo, here, B. Put this on your hands. Okay, B. Uh -huh. you, see, you, see how, you see how Bill... But I'm saying, when did you start being OCD? I, I've been like that. Oh, you, you know him. You know him. I just feel like I got a little... You know, that's you why all, that's you, why my hands are always you ashy. Have, you Let me tell y'all why my hands. If you ever pre -COVID, pre COVID, if you ever see my hands super ashy, it's because I wash them three hundred times, times, thousand times a day. day. It's crazy. I gotta stop. You gotta let go. You gotta I, let your hands get and dirty. So, and so when we when we when we you know go out, we have some some food or dinner. I'm like, yo yo B, you. We just played 19 games of basketball. You ain't you, gonna, you gonna wash, wash your hands. <laughs> Motherfucker sweat all on you. Yeah. You done high five. You got 30 uh, different dudes germs. sweats. You got germs all, all over you, your hands. While you eating your french fries. What, what you doing, bro? Uh, I'm just saying. Some you home training. You know bro. your mama. I mean, I mean, I'm just letting the world get, know get, some get, real some stuff training. about it. And you also, for people who don't know, he is the only person in the world that introduced me to vegan food first. He the first person <laughs> that told me I need to stop eating meat. And I swear to God, it was the most painful experience. I don't know if there's any vegans on here. When you go out with a vegan, they tell you everything that chase like chicken right. that just like beef um, what what is it uh, uh, tastes like chicken <laughs> it does it doesn't uh, taste like chicken oh my I, god I listen it. to me chickpeas quinoa <laughs> oh my god Yo, Being, hanging out with you is the I'm worst i'm a little I, i'm a little boring it's I know. the worst you I eat know. healthy you, you you everything is from the ground <laughs> i'm sick of you from the frog when, to the table. <laughs> I'm sick listen, of him. You can't, have, you can't have nothing in this Yo, house. B, ain't no Chick-fil-A, no nothing. B gives me the hardest time on everything. But I'm going to tell you where the, the times that you give me the worst time. What's that? Is when we play some ball, right? Okay. So let, let, let's talk about our basketball. basketball. You know what I'm saying? Well, basketball. How much you shoot or me? Bro, you haven't found a shot that you did not like to take. Why not? This motherfucker, you it's shooting open. from the locker room, your I'm shot, open. yo, is not that wet. I'm not open. No, bro. I mean, I'm just saying, so, so, Sometimes my, my shot wet, though. Sometimes it once is. A, if he month. get on a roll, you will I'm not <laughs> leave it down. Yo, the brother has stats. He keeps yeah, up I'm with a, his stats on a pickup on a pickup game. Don't nobody do that but me. The only, only Bill. And, hey. and, and and so for all those who play ball with Bill, who want to shoot when who I wanna, think I'm wanna, open, who want to say the things open. that I'ma say, I can say it. Y'all can't say it because that's my man's. <laughs> Y'all talk greasy to him, then we all, you know, we got say, problems. it's problems off top. Because you the type. See, Bill and I, we we fight on the court, right? So we'll be on the same team. And me and the B, only fight we ever had was playing basketball. I think couple, yeah, it, it was. Like, it just like, got like, wasn't a fight. It was just like intense. a real intense, because you know why you bought B, too B, much. B, it ain't serious. You, you, you start clapping. <laughs> B, 
We, you be you're barking. not Kobe, B. You're you not Kobe. Swear to God, everything, every shot. I'm like, yo, that mid range is cool, but that long range is not your lane. Stay mid range. It's all right. Uh, so if I let's just say I, I come in, okay, I might miss a shot, or I might, you know, miss a layup. Lt. L, come on, L, pass me the ball. I'm like, bro, I'm right but underneath. But you my point guard. I know, but if I'm under the rim, B, I'm not going to kick it back out to you half right, court. You're right, you're right, you're right. Right? So, but so, in the moment, in so the moment, me, I'm so too high. So people are like, are they on the same team? Because we ready to knuckle up. I'm like, you know, he's he, he much taller than me, so I'm, I'm up here with him. <laughs> I'm squaring up with him. They're like, yo, who is Yo, I'm going to tell you one of the most. Ready I, to sock him in listen, the mouth. I have so much footage of us playing two on two. One of my favorite, I, I went into, like, this is back VHS days when we used to have a carry out little Sony. Yeah, a we little got the little camera. Little handheld. Mm -hmm. And so I had one, and LT had one. I will never forget this. You came to the beach house, so we out in Malibu, and we had Baller. a hoop out there. And it was it was me and you against Ron Workman and uh, Eugene Caldwell. He yes. was the production guy. Right. And what was our nicknames? Okay, so Pen <laughs> Penny Hardaway was, was, was the man in the back then, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, and obviously Shaquille O'Neal. So right. I was dime- Hardaway, right. you see Penny, I'm dime because I'm dropping dimes. dimes. Right, right, right. And that's Bill O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> so that I was, was like, my name, Bill O'Neill. I was like, and yo, once we not going to work we on their ass. Was, we was what? giving them giving the business, man. Oh man. We used to we used to go on to different courts, man. Oh my and God. think we had okay, our two men thing it down. Was, too. It was it was Dime Hardaway and, and Bill O'Neill. Bill O'Neill, man. We should have had shirts. We should have had shirts. <laughs> Could have had shirts. We should have had shirts. See, this is this is the extent of our friendship, man. We have had some of the most iconic moments together as friends, traveling. You know, sometimes we end up in the same cities. A lot of the same cities, um, doing charity work, I doing things for the communities. And I want to tell you know. people one of my favorite. It's a couple stories that is really funny, but this one I never told. This is uh, when uh, Chris Tucker had just finished doing Fridays. We went all went out. He's on fire. Yes. But he couldn't get in the rain. Do you remember when uh, Keyshawn Johnson had rain and they oh, would not yeah. let so, Chris so, Tucker so, in because so he had was, on jeans? So this particular um, uh, establishment. Was it on um, Robertson? Nah, was it, it Robertson it, or Beverly? I can't remember okay. exactly. But this particular restaurant was Keyshawn Johnson, football star, um, black owned. It was sexy, grown, was real, real, southern but, right, food. But it was one of those things that it was a strict dress code. Yeah, it was. Right? And you could not get in there if you had on baseball caps or, or sneakers or, or whatever. Baggy jeans. Whatever it was. And which was a little weird for us because that was our whole get yeah. down. But we always knew how to, you know, But see, we had, we, we had fixed it up a little bit. But yeah. we was with Chris. He looked like he just came out of Fridays. Yes, he was so, <laughs> Smokey. So, so he, he looked just like Smokey. Right. So we come up to the, to the thing and they hit him with the five fingers. And he was like, man, I... What's wrong? <laughs> it's like, hey, bro, you got some pants in the truck? He was like, what? He was like, man, I'm dressed. They was like, nah, bro, no, you can't get in. What you mean I can't get in? Yes. And, yo, yeah. he started <laughs> clowning. Wow. And, you know, this is, once again, you just disappeared. Yeah. You, just, you was like, I'm not doing all this. And you kind of said, well, you was eating. Yeah, I, I snuck into the, the, the way. <laughs> I'm let them figure that out. They I were, love you. I love you, CT. But let me go ahead and yeah, get to this, this Chris, fried chicken. Chris was hot, right? So guess what they end up doing? At the end of the night, they would not let him walk in the front where everybody... Man. We, they made him go around the back and gave us a table by the exit. Man, they made him walk through like it was the <laughs> 1930s, walking into a, a whites-only establishment. And we was like, yo, keep showing. Yo, he, we yo, thought you, this was black-owned. Yeah, I thought, I, thought, I thought we was good. He was man, like, yo, fam, I, no disrespect. No disrespect. Y'all go around the back and y'all sit over there so people don't see y'all in here with the hats on yeah, or whatever. whatever. Yeah, but we, we, Shout we, out to Keyshawn. Yeah, you gonna remember that yeah, moment. Yeah, we had, we had a lot of great moments just yeah. Spending time here in uh, L.A., spending time in my hometown, Chicago. Chicago. Y'all would come out for the Tate Brothers Foundation. We would always have people come in. i take you over to the west side. we go see Grandmama. Um, it was great. You know your get... Grandmama got the best fried chicken, and yeah. she cook it with, with butter. Yeah, sure. Not my, all. Yeah, yeah. So my grandmother... Just was... chunks of butter. Yeah, so that's just what... Just throw a chunk of butter <laughs> in the pan and throw the chicken in there, and it's, it's, it's just... Golden and it's golden and Golden, beautiful, uh, fluffy, just flaky, just just rich, and uh, uh, a cardiac arrest is right, waiting for you I at never, the end of I, it. I but. was like, are you sure we can eat this? You just, just eat it, bro. Yeah, because that's what she eat do. It, she would, this is what my grandmama do. Man. My mother's mom, she would break down the chicken. I whole. She could break it family. down. She would, um, she, would, she would put it in, you know, the, 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 season it up. 
and um, put it in in butter. It was not oil in it. It was just straight butter. That's my 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 mom's mom, who's the West. My dad is on the, obviously the Tay side. Um, but yeah, man, it was uh, one of those things that I had to introduce you. That to. was that was my baptism to yeah. the Tate family. Yeah, to the West Tate family. The yes, West Tate, Tate family. Yes, yes. And speaking yes. of Chicago, which no one else, no one rise for this city like you do Chicago. I mean, there's I'm sure there's a few people, but like my personal friends, how they ride for your city. You love Chicago. Correct. You are a a, a beacon for that city. Yes. I love what you're doing now. Yes. You know, outside of acting, what you're doing in the city. Tell people about, you know, what you're doing uh, Lending your your expertise and your influence in the in the, in the community. Well, first and foremost, man, <laughs> um, shout out to everybody in the shy. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that Chicago would not allow my brothers, Laron and Lamar and I, to disassociate ourselves or disconnect oh, from the no shy. Day. Even though we spent most of our time here in LA, you know, we spent um, just as equal amount of time uh, in our free downtime in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And the city just always embraced us. And we always wanted to carry that with us. And our mother and father always said, never forget where you come from, right? right. And so it's been always a part of who I am, being from the shy. And the things that we wanted to do was sort of give back. Anytime that we understood where you know folks were marginalized or people did not um, have some of the things that we were experiencing, we always wanted to find a way to sort of give back. So we created the Tate Brothers Foundation um, that focused on sickle cell disease, um, this, this, on other health matters that affected the black community, we started in, in Chicago. And then it began to really branch off into a bunch of different things from education, and then we started finding out about, you know, more financial uh, literacy uh, issues, and just the fact that, you know, today we look, look around and, you know, what they call a uh, redevelopment, which is really gentr gentrification, is happening in the very places that I grew up and Whoa. where my family, where they are. And so we've been finding ways to just sort of give back and, you know, more than just give back, find ways to be a part of redeveloping the community in which I come from that eventually will move most of the people who look like you and I out of those communities and be displaced while we have so much, you know, you, you, you see the rise in crime, you see, the, you know, um, you know, uh, unemployment. When you displace people, they're trying to figure it out, right? One second. And Let him just go. Right. <laughs> he having fun. Right. He having fun. So, so, you know, what we found ourselves looking um, to Chicago, uh, in the communities, things that we felt were really important, right? And we're like, listen, man, there was a time where uh, on the south side of Chicago in a, in a, in a, in a community called Bronzeville, mm -hmm. where black folks really thrived. Absolutely. We had our own hospitals. We ran our own grocery stores, our department stores. We ran our own banks. We governed over ourselves. We had our own police departments. We policed ourselves. And this is at a time where, you know, Black folks was coming out of the South, right? Yeah. You know, r out of Jim Crow during this great migration, the greatest migration um, known to American, um, you know, history. history, right? Mm -hmm. Six, seven million black folks moved from the South to the Northwest um, and, um, you know, towards the East. And that being said, this metropolis in Chicago, Bronzeville, uh, was really, you know, populated by black folk but all doing the things that were necessary to thrive as a community. And we didn't have to lean on nobody else. Self-sufficient, right? Yes, and so we did a podcast series about it. Um, it's sort of theater of the mind. But what that said to me was like, oh, man, there was a time that we really ran it. What changed? What happened? We have to get back to that. Yeah. We have to have our own, you know, uh, banking systems that we can thrive in. So when people go into a bank to get a loan, Right. To start, you know, a future for their their, their uh, families, open up a business or to buy their first piece of property that they don't get the runaround. They're not redlined. They're not, you know, escorted out. Right. Or to be able to have access to the nat the, 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 the resources that we feel that are necessary, whether well, it's health. Well, are to have a yeah. thriving community. You have to have access to resources. And that that's what I, I, I'm, I'm about, too. It's like. What I see you doing in Chicago is incredible because you're getting you're there with the developers. And We're there guys, with the developers. And you're and at, the, at the beginning stages. A lot of times we get there at the end and it's too late. Nah. It's all laid out. And be, you and can't get in. Listen, you can't. No rent for you. And, and before we even get to the developers, man, we got to get down to the to the to the politicians and the, uh, the city officials and all the people who 
have that access and yeah. what this is and the city lawyers planners. city planners you got to do a lot there's a lot of red tape yeah, there's a lot of things man. It's and, an interesting and world. it's a really interesting but i'm very intrigued by it and i'm always encouraging more of us to get involved right mm -hmm. and so that's what we're doing back home in chicago redeveloping community uh developers and finding ways to really connect so that you know, the, the folk and the, the people who come from the neighborhood, whether it's from the west side where we're from or the south side or north side, wherever, with, where we are, we don't have to be displaced. We don't have to go nowhere, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. And so and so we can make it, it make it what I have been able to see in places like Los Angeles or places like New York where, you know, the communities are thriving. South side of Chicago is thriving right now. It's really bustling. It's now is the west side. We're, we're doing that and we're looking for do, doing things. So I'm really excited about that. That's like I said, you know, thing, you love you love Chicago because we also got a really great comedy scene. Great that, comedy that, and fantastic food. Great food, great um, art, um, museums. Oh it's a really beautiful place. And what we want to try to do is change the narrative yeah, absolutely. that, you know, black folks are not inherently uh, uh, violent and we're not, you know, prone to violence. I mean, just some of the circumstances and oftentimes what media typically do, do they take the lowest essence of us and give it the greatest it's uh, light. light. Yeah. And it's like, time. wait, stop that. You know, there's so, none of the good stuff. Yeah, you got there's so much more for us to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, man, I, I just uh I feel really blessed and I feel great that I have a family that's behind me. Um, you know, my brothers, Laron Lamar, my parents who are still rocking with us and, yeah. and family in Chicago, obviously my queen who is supporting me and my my my, my children, yeah, my four this boys. Is the thing yeah. that people don't know about you. You you yeah. are you are so old school family. Like yeah, you are a really man. a traditional family man. So are you, yeah. Bill Bellamy. No, I'm not, I, 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 mean, listen, I ain't know yeah. who the brains take. You know what I'm yeah, saying? No, no, I mean, listen, I listen. Do good. Let, me, let me just tell you about. Let me tell you. I often, I often say to my boys because they they love Uncle Bill and what they see you do. Mm -hmm. Well, Bailey and, and Baron, man, is just amazing. The fact that you do all these multiple things, right? right? You're so multifaceted. Yo, B stays on a plane, <laughs> getting that bag, but he's always there. Yeah, man, you for have the to. family. That's you the always balance. there for KB. You mm -hmm. always there for the children, mm -hmm. and you make a balance. And also for the friends and people who rely on you. You know, we carrying a lot of people on our show. Yeah, shoulders, we man. got we got some bricks back there. Yeah, we have, for sure. And I and I, I just want to say like what I love about what you do, man. You're just as passionate about your career as your family, and yes. you no matter how tired you are when you get off the plane you hit the carpool <laughs> man and you because because i need another day that relates so to the funny. pain so, so bill calls me in a month and he's the first I'm, we both fresh off the plane oh, ain't no stops there's no thing you pass go you pick up those kids <laughs> we taking the boys to school we taking everybody dropping off school we be we boom we picking the kids up we finding out what's happening for dinner we have we're doing making sure the homework is done we're yeah, involved right and then we have to make time for the ladies yes we got to make time for your queen you got to make, make time i got to make time for my queen you got to make time for for your queen and and people don't know there's there's a, a you know fun fact that uh we both was were in each other's weddings yeah. you stood up in my wedding i stood up in yours yeah. and we've been rocking man and it's just great to be able to have the support system because Absolutely. when you have a foundation that we have uh strong women who can really be honest with you, just caring and understanding and Pushing supportive you. man it's, mm. it's it's so important to have that, I'm pretty private when it comes to a lot of stuff. Bill's like, man, how come you, you, you never? I said, I talk about the family, but you know, my private life is the it's one yours. thing. It's the one thing that I can feel like I can control a little Absolutely, bit or yeah. have it because everything else is like you and I. We're out for the world. We're out for, for the people, and, and you know, so everything goes. Yeah, I respect but, that. But, I mean, yeah. I, I think like um, what's beautiful, and I mean, and this is. This is in my book. I talk about how I feel like my family is the only thing that I have that I created for me. Yeah. And I didn't realize that at the time before I became a dad that how important, you know, um, having a family of your own grounds you, but it gives you purpose. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, I don't ever feel like, oh, God, I'm too tired to be with my kids. I'm too tired to go to this. No. I just do it. No, for me, <laughs> I just it, do it, it. but it, it, it's a reset for me. Yeah. I love coming home. I love being a part of the family. I love that balance, man. It's what keeps me going. I look at them and I'm like, 
that's a reflection of me. Absolutely. That's a reflection of Thomasina. Man, mm. I love the fact that and we And you got on. four sons that look up sons. to you. You yes. know, one of them bigger than you now, but we're but not going to talk them, about Both of them. Miles is bigger than and me. Zan Xander is yeah, bigger yeah. than <laughs> Zion and Marley on they their on way. way. Mm -hmm. You in trouble. So you're going to need me to come over there to back you up. Uncle B to the rescue. What What is it like... Um, and I, this just recently happened to me. Has your kids um, ever seen you in a role and watch you, watch you? Like, like, like you yeah. at home and your movie comes on for a second in a scene and the boys are watching their dad on screen. Yes, that's, happen that's, that's happened be before. How do they feel when well, they see the you? Well, the first time it was Miles and Xander when they were a little younger. Okay. We were on a flight back from New York. And, right. you know, I kind of, <laughs> I was telling my children that anything that I, as a character that I play, if I played a fireman, that's what I would tell them because they were young. So I was right. like, "Yeah, your dad is a fireman. I'm a fireman. Right. You know what I'm saying? So dad is a fireman, right? right. So they would come on set and they see me on the fire with a fireman, fireman, or they they see whatever the character was. And so on the way back from New York, uh, moms, there's a t there's a, a um, I think an episode of either. Uh, Fresh Prince that uh -huh. I did an episode or Family Matters. Okay, I'm, it's the younger version of me, so, and my mother so is young. like. That's your daddy. That's your daddy. And my boys are not trying. They're trying to wrap their minds like, around. Like, how's my daddy a child? How's my daddy a child? <laughs> you know that's your daddy. I'm like, mama, mama, mama chill. Mama, you just, mama, just, they can't put the math I, I, together. I, I, I suppose to introduce them. So my mom uh -huh. was the first one to sort of put, but it was a little bizarre because it was a super younger version yes, of me. absolutely. And then there's been some things that they have seen, mm -hmm. um, and it's crazy. So I think when, when they do watch me, it's just like this surreal kind of dynamic. Yeah. And and then once it's over, it's over. You know, I'm back to being dead because they don't know me like the rest of the world. Okay. Like the rest of the world has seen me grow up in front up of the in, camera in and all that. Camera, yeah. Where they see like dad, you know what I'm saying? When I'm walking out, I got, you know, sleep in my eye, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. right. You know what I mean? I, I'm snoring and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm coughing and sneezing. What like, you know, things that people don't really get a chance to, yeah. to see, right? So my children see me in that way. Yeah. They see me in a way that I don't have to feel like, um, you know, I have to do everything right. There's no censorship. I can be truly myself. And you was teaching me that, man. Um, you know, you had said something to me once that really stuck out that I shared with both the wife and my children. You was like, you're going to see all of me. Y'all yeah. going to get all of me. You're going to get the happy one. You're going to get the guy who is out there hustling. But you're going to also get the person that sometimes I'm uncomfortable with certain things. Yeah, and, and I'm going to be honest. And I'm going to be honest. And, and I might snap off. Yeah. And what's great about it, even though we might blow a gasket a, 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 every now and again, the one thing is we never cross the line. You know what I'm saying? We, no. we ain't doing nothing that's crazy to, to, you our, know, to no, our children no. or you to our wife. But, be, but they're going to see all life. of that, that energy. Yeah, I, 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 and I said that because I feel like, you know, we've been. I felt good so I can cuss around my kids. Right, right. You cuss, can say a bad word I every now and then. Hell yeah. <laughs> Sit y'all asses down. Down. Okay, get back in the car seat. Yeah, that's why I beat y'all ass. ass. You know what I'm saying? All and and I don't be, I don't be doing none of that. But I, oh, yeah. I, I, I be talk giving them game. cookies and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, <laughs> um, uh, getting back to the kids real quick, I think that being a dad is in a full throttle. Dad, the whole the whole pie of you, where you get to be, you know, someone who's the leader of the family and the provider, but also a person that's a confidant with your kids, and you get to teach, and you they teach you. Man, I learned the, so much. I bro, I I'm learned learning. so much being a dad. Like, Good Lord. The, the, like I would have never learned. Like it, it, people who don't have kids don't know what we're talking about. But when you have kids, you actually are learning backwards. Yeah, man, it's a, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me mm -hmm. being a father mm -hmm. to my children and having boys um it's unique because raising them in a world where you know they are already deemed as one thing mm -hmm. to the world i make sure my wife also makes sure that they know that they are can be the best versions of themselves Absolutely. they can there's nothing that can stop them mm -hmm. that they are great that they're amazing that they're smart they're intelligent they're creative they they're they're you know uh fearless mm. um they're warriors uh they understand love and passion and not to be also a pushover like you can be kind yeah, you all you daily but you ain't got to be overly stupid. the stupid and like you gotta shit. stand up for yourself. oh yeah oh yeah we Let's don't play go. no games listen like come listen, on listen, chicago got, stop playing with me you got to have a little bit of that edge in you too <laughs> all of it like you say we got to have all of it and we had great examples we had great examples from my father and my mother, Same as well here. as your mother and father. God rest both their spirits. You know, I miss uh, my mother. And, 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 and then when was crazy. And William. 
Yo, Bill looks so much like his father. Oh, I remember the crazy. first time I, I seen saw, a picture of myself recently. I was like, oh my God, I thought I saw, it was my when, father. When I saw, I saw it was a black and white picture of your father. Yes, I sir. thought it was you. Yeah. And I could not I'm a believe clone. that. Yeah. And Karen, and your your sister looks just like your mama. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, yeah. yeah. So and cool. my brother Julius was a combo, combo. of the other, other yeah. two. You know what I'm saying? Like Jews, what people, this is what I want people to um to really get from this this particular episode of Top Billing is like friendship. Um, hard work, um, perseverance, and and positivity. You always positive. You know, you always push me as as a friend. You always say, "B man, let them see the real you. Don't yeah. don't hold back. Don't be hold back. don't be safe. Don't you know what safe. I'm saying? Yeah, because and, the best part of you is when you're unsafe and you're speaking your truth. Absolutely. And that's some of the funniest thing. Bill has man. There's been many times that we just <laughs> literally laugh in tears, man. And, and, but and, you funny too, cause that no one, no one knows <laughs> the stuff that you say when you in the car. Like you be saying stuff when we on the phone that no, I, I be say, like, I say. Yo, you would never say it nowhere. No. But you be saying some of the funny stuff, and I be like, yo, man, if you was a comic, that's the joke. You don't even know. But you just telling the truth. I'm just telling the truth, man. And we've been honest, and it's a, you know, uh, sort of indicative to our relationship and our friendship and our brotherhood mm -hmm. that we are unapologetically ourselves we respect one another man we encourage each other but we can we have a safe space to be who we truly absolutely. are absolutely yes. and now and now another another hit under the belt you know this 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 role on power book ghost is yeah. just incredible for you obviously you know it's part of the culture i've been part, I, you're, you're you're part of the i'm culture. a part of that culture again, again man I'm, again. I'm, I'm i'm grateful another man. one yeah another another one and they and they took care of me How over there too oh uh, they took care of me yeah they they loan me five they, they, <laughs> <laughs> anything you need brother Call anything you need i got you all That's right when you come on when you come on the show we play a game called all facts yes all facts all okay? facts i ask you two questions you get to tell me the truth all facts uh -huh. okay all right Dream role, dream character you would love to play if you thought about it and you could do it, produce it, and be the lead in the movie. What character would you play if it was a iconic character or a, a someone that you would like to play? Like, I always want to play Marvin Gaye. Like, I was like, mm. I could do a Marvin Gaye character or something like, you know, maybe play him because he was sort of like a, a star on one end and it was sort of like a uh, darker side. Yeah. Like, or a Donny Hathaway. Right. You know, like, do you have a character like that you would well, play? Well, it's more of a story okay. that I, I would love to tell. And I made mention of it. It's... Um, uh, the, the story about Bronzeville, black folks really doing it on our own. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I would love for that to come to fruition. How can we really make um, a way to see that, whether it's a TV show or a, a movie? Uh, I love to see things when we are in control of our own destiny and we see things through our own prism and our lens. That's gangster. All right, top, top billing. Uh, all facts. Question number two for Lorenz Tate. Five prolific Chicago legends to come out of that. Give me five. Uh, Bernie Mac. Pow! You um, better have said Bernie Mac. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, um, um, before Bernie Mac was... Um, before Bernie Mac out of Chicago? Ah. Uh, I, I don't know why it's it's escaping me. Um, Before turn Bernie Mac, uh, comic, um, um, Red Fox. No, no. not Red, even though Red Fox uh, from Chicago. Um, what are you thinking? Was in House Party, original House Party's kid's dad. Um, oh, Robin Harris. Ra Robin Harris. That's okay. What so Robin, you got Robin Harris, Bernie, Bernie Mac, Mac. Um, uh, Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones is from Chicago. Originally from Chicago. Oh, the Q. Yes. That's gangster. Go originally ahead. from Chicago. Um, who else originally from Chicago? Uh, prolific, prolific, prolific. Uh, it could be in any any genre too. It don't matter. Uh, Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan is from Chicago. Yeah. I feel for you. Yeah. Shaka Khan. Uh, yes. Cause I love you. I love you, Shaka. She's still um, fine. She still looks oh, thirty five. Uh, beautiful. How she looked the same my whole life. I know, man. I, I know, love me some Shaka Khan. And uh, whether you, you know, he's very polarizing right now, but he's prolific. Is Ye West? Kanye. Yes, you gotta go with Ye. Kanye. Shout out to Ye. We love you, bro. Yeah. Get and get well. Honor, no, I'm just uh, yeah, for sure. And honorary mention to Tate Brothers. 
<laughs> yes! <laughs> Listen, LeBrands, I it is an honor to uh, have you on the show. And let me tell you this. You are a platinum top biller. Do you understand? Wow. There's regular top billers, but by, by top but platinum is, you hit on every platform. You have two iconic roles that are up on anniversaries. Just for people who are watching right now, 26 years of Love Jones and in the Academy as a film noir. That is Darius Love Hall, people. And yeah. Brother Hollywood. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. And you know people still hate me because of you. Yes, they Because people loved you more than me. Like, that's the part that I don't understand. Like, he, was, he wasn't shit either. But no, I come to the party with your chick. I, I ain't shit, you know. Toxic but, behavior. Toxic behavior. Dysfunctional friendship. Uh... Also, also Minister to Society, Old Dog. 30 years. 30 years up. anniversary. And you have, for all the people out there that have seen Love Jones, that know the poem, Ode to Nina. Is it Ode to Nina? No, it's, it's called. It's called A Blues for oh. Nina, Brother to the Night. See, why you got to go back into the voice, though? Say, baby, can I be your slave? I've got to admit, girl, you're the shit girl, and I'm digging you like a grave. Hey. See, I'm going to tell you right now, there was some panties that just <laughs> fell off. If you listening to the audio, that's, that's what, that's drip, a, drip. It's 26 it, years, I had to do it. If you listening, drip, drip, and if you watch it, you scream wet. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please give it up for Lorenz Tay. Thank you for coming by Top <laughs> and everybody. My brother, my big bro, my big bro, always and forever. I love you, bro. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe I said drip, drip. <laughs> Milk is chilling. Kiss is chilling. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Billing, baby. Yeah. Appreciate you. Lorenz right. Tate in the building. I'm here, baby. Top billing. Hey.